So welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 to 5 today as we move into the new chapter. And here it is. Then Moses said, What if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? For they may say, The Lord has not appeared to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A staff. Then he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand and grasp it by its tail. So he stretched out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. So Moses has reason to believe that this liberty initiative isn't going to be received even by the Hebrews without some kind of serious coaxing, and so he's asking God for some help in that. So God's going to give it to him, and he starts with something that's already in Moses' hand. It's his staff. See, Moses isn't sent to a training school. He's not going to go and spend 10 weeks getting a, a certificate. Not, nothing like that. He's going to just start with what he's already got. A lot of times we delay while we're kind of waiting for our training or our, or our equipping. And training and equipping is good. There's nothing really wrong with it. But a lot of times there's a lot to be done. And, and you know, you don't really need to wait. You need to go and, and start with what you've got and just take it from there. So in Bible times, a person's staff kind of functioned like their, their driver's license or their ID. It functioned in that way as kind of an identifying piece. It's like their credit card. And God will now use Moses' staff to kind of certify him as the, his agent for, their, for the deliverance of the Hebrews. Now, it's not that God invested the staff with some kind of magical power or something. But Egypt was a nation just, just thoroughly eaten through, invested with with magical this and magical that. There's a lot of magical that was built into the culture there. So now God, not the staff, not Moses, but God working through the staff, God's going to do some miracles and demonstrate the superiority of his power. Moses isn't going to uh, speak any spells or incantations. He's just going to simply do what God tells him to do. And that's, that's what the way it's going to be. So there's a demonstration here, and so God takes Moses, and he turns his staff into a serpent, and Moses says, whoa, and he backs out of there, because, you know, there's a lot of poisonous snakes in Egypt, and uh, yeah, this was kind of, a, kind of an interesting moment. You might have seen in movies or television productions how the pharaohs would wear kind of a serpent uh, on, their, on their head. They had sort of a representation of a serpent there. That's because one of the Nile gods was a co the cobra goddess, and she was understood to protect royalty, the royalty of Egypt. And so uh, Pharaoh there is under the snake god's protection. We'll see how that works out. So God begins his campaign here by just undermining the deities of Egypt. And first of all, the cobra goddess uh, comes in for the first treatment here with this first uh, sign that Moses has. So let's see what happens as things just start to warm up. 